Hey, what's up? I'm Sarah, and I'm about to spill some serious tea about my messed up family situation. Before I dive in, hit that like and subscribe button if you want to hear more juicy stories like mine. I'm 15, living in this suburban house that looks perfect from the outside, but inside, total disaster. It's me, my dad, my stepmom, Lisa, ugh, and my two little half-siblings, Tommy and Emma. My dad? He's my rock. We're tight, always have been. But when Lisa's around, it's like the air gets thick with tension. You can cut it with a knife, I swear. Two years ago, my world fell apart when my mom died. It was just me and dad for a while, and we were dealing, you know? Then Lisa swoops in, and suddenly I've got a new mom, whether I want one or not. Sarah, honey, can you help set the table? Dad calls from the kitchen. I head downstairs, passing Lisa in the hallway. She gives me that fake smile. Oh, Sarah... I was just about to ask Tommy to do that. It's cool, I got it, I say, trying to keep the peace. In the kitchen, I start grabbing plates. Hey dad, need any help with dinner? Nah, I'm good, kiddo. How was school today? We chat while I set the table, and it feels normal, like old times. But then Lisa walks in, and the vibe shifts instantly. I try, I really do. I play with Tommy and Emma, help them with homework, all that big sister stuff. But Lisa's always there hovering, making comments. Sarah, don't you have your own homework to do? She'll say. Or, Tommy, Emma, let's not bother your sister. It's getting worse lately. Lisa's always complaining about me to dad. She's so disruptive, I heard her say once. The kids can't focus with her around. Last night, I couldn't sleep and went to get some water. That's when I heard them arguing in their room. She needs structure, John, Lisa was saying. A good boarding school could really help Sarah focus. My heart stopped. Boarding school? No way. I don't know, Lisa. Dad sounded unsure. She's been through so much already. Exactly. This could be a fresh start for her. And for us. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Lisa was trying to get rid of me. Push me out of my own family. I ran back to my room, my mind racing. How could Dad even consider this? I'm his daughter, not some problem to be shipped away. As I lay in bed, staring at the ceiling... I knew one thing for sure. I wasn't going down without a fight. Lisa might think she's won, but she has no idea who she's messing with. This is my family, my home, and I'm not about to let her push me out. I couldn't sleep all night after overhearing that conversation. The next morning, I marched straight to Dad's office. We need to talk. Dad looked up, surprised. What's wrong, kiddo? I heard you and Lisa talking last night about sending me to boarding school. His face fell. Sarah, it's not what you think. Really? Because it sounds like you're trying to get rid of me. That's not true. We just think it might be a good opportunity for you. Lisa appeared in the doorway. Oh, Sarah, I'm glad we're discussing this. It's such an exciting chance for you. I glared at her. Cut the crap, Lisa. I know you just want me gone. Language, Sarah, Dad warned. Seriously? That's what you're worried about right now? For days, I tried everything to change their minds. I improved my grades, helped around the house more, even offered to get a part-time job. Nothing worked. In desperation, I called Grandma and Grandpa. Please, can you talk to Dad? Make him see reason? Of course, sweetheart. We'll call him right away. But when I asked Dad about it later, he looked confused. What call? I haven't heard from them in weeks. That's when I started noticing things. Mail that went missing. Phone calls that never came through when I was home. One day, I caught Lisa in the act. She was in the kitchen, ripping up a letter addressed to me. My grandparents' handwriting. What are you doing? I yelled. She jumped, trying to hide the evidence. Sarah, I... I was just cleaning up some old mail. That was addressed to me. You've been hiding my letters. Don't be ridiculous, she scoffed. You're just upset about the school situation. I lost it. You're damn right I'm upset. You're tearing my family apart. Dad came running in. What's going on? She's been intercepting my mail, Dad. Letters from Grandma and Grandpa. Lisa put on her best innocent face. John, I would never. Sarah's just lashing out. I couldn't believe it when Dad hesitated. Sarah, that's a serious accusation. Do you have any proof? My jaw dropped. Are you kidding me? You're taking her side. I'm not taking sides. But we can't just throw around accusations without evidence. I stormed off to my room, slamming the door. How could he not see what was happening? A week later, 
Dad called a family meeting. My stomach dropped as soon as I saw his face. Sarah, we've made a decision. We think it's best if you attend Westbrook Academy this fall. The world stopped. No. No way. Dad, please. It's for the best, honey. You'll see. I looked at Lisa, who couldn't hide her smug smile. You're choosing her over me? Your own daughter? It's not like that, Sarah. We're doing this because we love you. Bull! If you loved me, you'd listen to me. I ran to my room, tears streaming down my face. As I started packing my things, reality hit hard. My own father was abandoning me, choosing his new wife over his daughter. Looking around at my childhood bedroom, I felt my heart breaking. This was it. I was being kicked out of my own home, sent away like some problem child. Well, fine. If that's how they want it, I'll go. But this isn't over. Not by a long shot. Lisa might think she's won, but she has no idea what's coming. I'll find a way to expose her for the manipulative witch she is, even if it's the last thing I do. Westbrook Academy was like a prison with fancy uniforms, strict rules, snobby kids, and teachers who acted like drill sergeants. But I wasn't about to let this place break me. I had a mission. Expose Lisa and get back home. My roommate Zoe was this tech genius with blue hair and a rebellious streak. You need dirt on your stepmom? I'm your girl, she said, cracking her knuckles. Then there was Marcus, this smooth-talking guy from the Bronx. He overheard us planning and offered to help. I've dealt with manipulators before. I can teach you how to play their game. We formed our little revenge squad, spending every free moment plotting. Zoe showed me how to use spy cams and set up secure communication channels. Marcus taught me the art of subtle manipulation. It's all about pushing the right buttons, he explained. Get her comfortable, then drop little comments that'll make her show her true colors. During a weekend visit home, I snuck around planting Zoe's devices. Tiny cameras in the living room, kitchen, even Lisa's precious home office. Sarah, what are you doing in here? Lisa's voice made me jump. I spun around, heart pounding. Just looking for a pen. Dad asked me to write down a phone number. She narrowed her eyes but bought it. Close call. I also managed to slip a burner phone to Tommy. If anything weird happens when I'm gone, text me, okay? The evidence started rolling in. Lisa yelling at the kids for minor things, making snide comments about Dad's parenting, even flirting with the neighbor when Dad was at work. But the real gold mine came from Tommy's texts. Mom forgot to pick us up from school again. Or, she told Emma her drawing was stupid and made her cry. Zoe helped me compile it all into an airtight case. This is some serious shit, Sarah. Your stepmom's a piece of work. Marcus nodded, reviewing our evidence. Now we just need the cherry on top. Something so undeniable your dad can't ignore it. That's when I remembered Lisa's sketchy comments about dad's finances. She's always pushing him to invest in her friend's businesses. What if she's scamming him? Zoe's eyes lit up. Financial fraud? Oh, we can work with that. We dug deeper, following money trails and piecing together Lisa's shady deals. It was like putting together a twisted puzzle. And with each piece, my anger grew. During my next home visit, I put Marcus's lessons to work. I played nice, asking Lisa innocent questions about her investment opportunities. Oh, Sarah, you wouldn't understand. It's all very complicated adult stuff, she said condescendingly. I forced a smile. I'm just curious. Maybe I could learn something? Dad always says how smart you are with money. Her ego stroked. Lisa started bragging about her financial skills. Little did she know, every word was being recorded. Your father's so clueless about these things, she laughed. It's easy to convince him to put money where I want it. Bingo. The final nail in her coffin. Back at Westbrook, we reviewed all our evidence. Hours of footage, dozens of text messages, financial records showing Lisa's embezzlement. Holy shit, Marcus whispered. You've got her dead to rights. Zoe nodded, a fierce grin on her face. Your stepmom's going down, girl. I stared at the mountain of evidence, a mix of emotions swirling inside me. Anger, hurt, but also determination. She thought she could push me out and take over my family, but she messed with the wrong girl. This was it. The moment of truth was coming. Christmas break was around the corner, and I was heading home armed with enough evidence to blow Lisa's world apart. She wanted to play games? Fine. Game on, bitch. Christmas break arrived, and I walked into my house like a soldier going to war. The evidence was locked and loaded on my phone, ready to blow Lisa's world apart. Sarah, 
Welcome home, sweetie. Dad hugged me tight. Lisa's fake smile appeared. How lovely to have you back. I bit my tongue, waiting for the right moment. That night, after dinner, I struck. Dad, Lisa, we need to talk. There's something you need to see. I pulled out my phone and started playing the recordings. Lisa's eyes widened as her own voice filled the room, revealing her true colors. What is this? Dad looked confused, then angry. Keep watching, I said grimly. As the evidence piled up, Lisa's neglect, her manipulation, the financial fraud, Dad's face went from disbelief to fury. Lisa, what the hell is this? She scrambled for excuses. John, it's not what it looks like. Sarah's clearly manipulated these videos. Oh, really? I played the clip of her bragging about tricking Dad financially. You've been stealing from me? Dad's voice was dangerously low. Lisa's composure cracked. I... I can explain. Tommy and Emma, hearing the commotion, appeared in the doorway. Is Mom in trouble? Emma asked timidly. Emma, sweetie, tell Daddy the truth. Has Mom been treating you okay when I'm gone? Emma hesitated. Then the floodgates opened. She and Tommy spilled everything. The neglect, the harsh words, the broken promises. Lisa was cornered, her mask slipping. You ungrateful brats. After everything I've done for this family. Suddenly, the front door opened. Hello? Anyone home? Lisa froze. It was her parents, arriving for a surprise Christmas visit. Mom? Dad? What are you doing here? Lisa's voice was shrill. Her mom took in the scene. Lisa, what's going on? In a twist of karmic justice, Lisa's parents witnessed her complete meltdown. As she ranted and raved, trying to salvage her lies, they exchanged knowing looks. John, Lisa's dad said quietly, I think it's time you knew the truth about our daughter. What followed was a revelation of Lisa's history, failed marriages, financial scams, a pattern of manipulation stretching back years. We had hoped she'd changed, her mom said sadly. We're so sorry. Dad's face was a storm of emotions. Get out, he said to Lisa, his voice ice cold. Pack your things and get out of my house. John, please, you can't do this to me, Lisa wailed. Watch me. As Lisa was escorted out by her parents, Dad turned to me, tears in his eyes. Sarah, I'm so sorry. I should have believed you. Can you ever forgive me? I hugged him tight, my own tears falling. I love you, Dad. We'll get through this. In the following months, justice played out. Lisa lost custody of Tommy and Emma. Last I heard, she was working as a cashier in some small town, alone and bitter. Meanwhile, our family healed. Dad and I rebuilt our relationship, stronger than ever. Tommy and Emma flourished without Lisa's toxic influence. Zoe and Marcus became regular visitors, honorary members of our rebuilt family. We'd sit around laughing about our spy adventures at Westbrook. You know, Zoe said one day, we should start a business, teenage detectives or something. We all cracked up, but part of me thought, why not? After all, we'd already taken down one manipulative witch. Who knows what other wrongs we could right? Looking around at my family, my real family, I felt a sense of peace. Lisa had tried to destroy us, but in the end, her actions only made us stronger. And me? I learned that sometimes, you have to fight for your place in the world. But when you do, victory is sweet indeed. The story's over, folks. Now here's a question for you. If you were in Sarah's shoes, would you have forgiven your father for choosing Lisa over you? Or would that betrayal be unforgivable? How far is too far when it comes to family loyalty? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. We're dying to hear what you think about this family drama and where you'd draw the line. If you enjoyed this wild ride, smash that like button and subscribe for more juicy stories like this one. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming next. Stay tuned.